Assalamualaikum and a good day everyone. Hi there, I hope you are doing well today. So, today I would like to discuss the subtopic 6.3 which is meiosis. So, I'll start off by explaining what is meiosis. So, we have learned in the previous class what is mitosis. Mitosis is a process that occurs in the somatic cell. But today, I will explain what happened and what is meiosis. So, meiosis is the cell division that occur in reproductive organ, which are testis and ovary. The function or the purpose is to produce the gamet. Gamet, which is in male, it will produce sperm, while in female, it produces ovum. So, this gamet will contain half number of chromosomes, which is called haploid, from the parent, which is diploid. So, regarding here, you can see the parents contain, at the beginning, contain two number of chromosomes. But at the end of the process meiosis 2, it will contain only one number of chromosome and four daughter cell. So, inilah yang dimaksudkan dengan gamete yang dihasilkan mempunyai number separuh, iaitu haploid daripada number parents dia, number chromosome parent dia tadi. Kan, iaitu dua kan So, akhirnya dia akan dapat satu sahaja Let's say for human The number of chromosome of human Of human is 46 So, in the sperm, it will contain 23 only Okay Now, uh, we discuss about why the meiosis is needed So, kenapa perlunya ada meiosis ni Sebab To form the gamete through the gametogenesis Gametogenesis is the process to form the gamete, which is to form the sperm and ovum. Alright, so next one is to ensure the diploid chromosome of number maintain. Bermaksud nak pastikan organism yang dihasilkan tu nanti maintain number chromosome dia iaitu 46. So, for the example, teacher explain, I'll check who explain kat sini. Uh, contohnya, sperm ada 23 number of chromosome. Dia akan fertilize dengan ovum yang ada 23 number of chromosome. So, during the fertilization, selepas itu, hasil number of chromosome produced adalah 46, which is the diploid chromosome. Ha, itulah pentingannya kenapa meiosis is needed. And next one is to produce the genetic variation in the same species. Mean, sebab itulah kita kalau dalam four siblings, adik-beradik kita empat orang, empat orang tu lain-lain tak sama. We got the eyes, kita akan ikut mak kita, rambut kita ikut ayah kita, ketinggian kita ikut atuk kita. So, this is the proof that the genetic variation produced. So, there are two stages in the meiosis, which is the meiosis 1, consists of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. Followed, the next stage is by the meiosis 2, which is consists of prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2 and Phase two. So, I would like to remind you the stages here is a very important because meiosis consists of two stages. Jadi, kalau kita cakap tentang fasa ini, number di belakang tu sangat penting. So, kalau cakap prophase, which prophase? One or two? So, you must mention prophase one or prophase two. Ah, So, dia sangat berbeza dengan mitosis. Mitosis tak perlu mention stages sebab dia memang tidak ada stage pun. Dia ada satu, satu stage tu sahaja. Okay, now... This is the animation that shows the the shows the meiosis one and meiosis two. So from here, teacher explain dulu tentang meiosis one ini. Di mana kamu tengok dia asal dari satu sel. So at the end of the meiosis one, it produce two daughter cell. So these daughter cells akan start dividing pula dekat meiosis two untuk hasilkan dua lagi daughter cell untuk setiap satu ni. So at the end of the process of meiosis two. Apa yang akan berlaku adalah for the third cell with produce lah. Tengok ni. Right. Nah, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, for the third cell produce the number of chromosome become haploid. Daripada 4 tadi dan the end of the process dia hanya akan dapat 2 sahaja chromosome. Okay. So, without wasting our time, we continue to discuss about meiosis 1. Right, so, meiosis 1 consists of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1 followed by cytokinesis. What happened during the prophase 1? Okay, the first thing first, I would like you to uh, take a look at the number of chromosome here. I got two samples here untuk gambar rajah ni. Tengok gambar rajah ni. 
the chromosome asal dia 4 1 2 3 4 and for this one is 6 each pair ni ada 2 kan biru dengan purple 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 88 89 90 91 92 93 94 95 96 97 98 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 Chromosome. Ya, I would remind, remind you that most important term here is homologous chromosome which is the same chromosome from maternal and paternal pada ayah dengan mak tu dan carry genetic genetic yang sama tu dia akan pair so the process nak pair tu dia panggil sebagai synapse to form bivalent bivalent ni apabila kedudukan the homologous chromosome tu tadi Uh, dua macam ni kan by dua warna purple satu warna biru tu bivalent tetrad pula adalah four chromatic for each homologous chromosome okey sebab satu chromosome ni terdiri daripada chromatic sister chromatic kan so ada satu dua tiga empat so itu yang dimaksud dengan tetrad crossing over which is the process of exchange genetic material will occur here in the process one to produce a number of chromosome that contain combination gene. Okay. Di mana kamu tengok dekat sini? Ada warna purple dengan blue. Ha, so, dekat sini berlaku crossing over process. Di mana genetic material daripada biru akan bertukar dengan purple. Yang purple akan pergi dekat bahagian biru. So, ini yang dipanggil sebagai proses crossing over. Pindah silang berlaku untuk berlaku pertukaran DNA. Genetic information. Baik, seterusnya adalah chiasma. What is chiasma? Which is the point that chromatic cross over. Di mana titik persilangan antara homologous chromosome tadi dan untuk melakukan proses pindah silang, namanya adalah chiasma. So, kalau tengok gambar raja dekat atas ni, so this is the chiasma. Boleh tak chiasma ni wujud lebih daripada satu dalam satu-satu homologous chromosome? Yes, can. Jadi, lagi banyak bersilang, lagi banyaklah berlaku Percampuran genetic information dekat situ. Okay, now the nucleus, the membrane start to disappear, nuclei start to disappear, central move to the opposite poles, the spinal fiber form and uh, start to attach to the central nerve. Okay, next phase is the metaphase one, the homologous chromosome arranged in the equatorial plane. Dah mula align dekat bahagian tengah tu ataupun metaphase plane. Split kan? Okay. Now sister chromatic type together. Dia akan duduk dekat tengah ni. Dia akan duduk sama-sama. And the centromer not separated. Nah, centromer tak terpisah seperti dalam mitosis. Dan penting di sini adalah I would like to remind you the terms of homologous chromosome. Kalau kamu jawab dalam exam nanti chromosome saja salah. Sebab at this condition, at this phase Uh, the behavior of the chromosome in the form of homologous chromosome. Maksudnya, kedudukan ataupun perlakuan chromosome ini dia di dalam bentuk homologous chromosome. Okay, next one is anaphase 1. Now, the spindle fibers start to contract. You can see the structure here based on the animation above. The homologous chromosome start to separate and pull to the opposite poles. Uh, ini beza dia dengan um, Anaphase dalam mitosis. Kalau dalam mitosis, dia start separate dekat centromere. Tapi dekat anaphase 1 ini, dia tarik keseluruhan kromosom tu tadi. So, each chromosome tied at the centromere move as a one unit. Dia tarik empat-empat lengan tu. Kan? Ha. Okay. Next stage is telophase 1. Okay. The chromosome will arrive at the opposite pole lah. Sampai dah dekat kutub uh, berlawanan tu. The polar cell contain haploid number of chromosome. So you see now the number of chromosome here. Tadi asalnya 6 untuk yang 3 atas ni. Sekarang dah jadi 3. So, game, so same goes to here. Asalnya 4. Sekarang dah jadi 2. So it will become haploid number of chromosome. At the ends of the telophase. The spindle fiber disappear, nuclei reappear, nuclear membrane form. Sebab apa nuk form baru? Sebab dia akan terpisah cytokinesis kan? Okay, so it will follow by the cytokinesis. Well, uh, okay then, which is at the end of telophase 1, uh, the two daughter cells will produce dalam keadaan haploid condition. 
next dia akan follow dengan interface alright cuma pada fase ini the shot dan juga DNA not replicate now we continue to the meiosis 2 the meiosis 2 will start when the nucleoli disappear the nuclear membrane disappear chromosome in the form of sister chromatid join at the centromere and the spindle fiber start to form ha, tengok sekarang cikgu dah tak gunakan istilah homologous chromosome sebab perlakuan kromosom kat sini bukan dalam bentuk homologous dah dia dah wujud dalam bentuk yang sama size tadi kan so kita kena sebut dia sebagai sister chromatid ok next is metaphase 2 the chromosom the sister chromatid will arrange randomly at the equatorial plane right so the chromatid that join or, or tied to the spinal fibers and uh, at the centromere so after that the centromere will separate so itulah pengakhiran metaphase 2 ok starting dari sini dia dah mula sama macam mitosis punya proses this is anaphase the centromere on the sister chromatids start to separate and move to the opposite poles so each chromatid in this stage known as chromosome kita boleh sebut dia juga sebagai chromosome last one it adalah telophase 2 what happened to the structure of the chromosome the chromosome will arrive at poles the number of chromosome become half from the parents you can see here Cikgu letakkan contoh gambar raja awal tadi mula-mula 6. Sekarang setiap satu sel ni hanya ada 3. Dan 4 number sel, daughter sel akan terhasil. Ha, saja satu, dah sekali dia hasilkan 4. Alright, spindle fiber start to disappear. Nuclear membrane recon reconstructed. Nuclei also reconstructed. At the end of the telophase 2 end, dia akan hasilkan cytokinesis which is produced for the plant cells with the haploid and develop into gamete. So at the end of the process, ovum and sperm will be produced. You can see us here also. As the part, so at the end of the process, meiosis 2, there are only two. So the book lah, number of chromosomes become haploid. Jadi separuh daripada number induk dan daughter cell. Bilangan empat uh, anak sel anak 4 itu tetap ok let's say lah number kromosom sesuatu organism itu katakan 100 so dia punya gamet dia akan jadi 50 dan number dah pesan 4 ok alright now let we discuss and uh, I will explain to you comparison and contrast between meiosis and mitosis both Mitosis and meiosis will undergo stages, the same stages which is interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. And the functions also to produce or to pass the genetic information. The differences we got lots here. So, we discuss the purpose of the processes, meiosis to produce gamete. Meanwhile, for the mitosis is for to replace, repair, growth or to replace the that cells. The number of the cell produced for meiosis is 4. Meanwhile, for mitosis is 2. Number of chromosome in the daughter cell ini sebagai contoh manusia so dalam mitosis, number chromosome dia tetap sama sebagai induk 46. Tapi kalau untuk meiosis, number chromosome dia adalah 23 itu half from the parent. Bilangan ploidy dia untuk mitosis adalah diploid. Meanwhile, for the meiosis is haploid. Is the cell genetical identical to the parent? So, untuk mitosis, yes. Cell yang dihasilkan tadi sama seperti asalnya. Meanwhile, untuk meiosis, no. Tak semestinya sama. And division, how many stages there? For mitosis, got only one. Meanwhile, for meiosis, we got two stages. Okay, thank you for watching. So that's all for today. I hope you can understand this subtopic of meiosis. So get ready for the next uh, subtopic, which is uh, 6.4, the issues of the cell division on human health. I hope you can ready 
uh, to for to the next lesson. With that, thank you very much for your attention and your commitment. You are very committed. Thank you very much. So see you.